In this tutorial, you will learn all about the layout in Dash. Together, we will understand the importance of the layout, what it is used for, how to structure it, as well as go over a few code examples. At the end of the tutorial, you'll be able to build your own Dash app layout as you display a variety of Dash components on your web browser. By constructing the layout, we will build two Dash apps. The first app will display an animated scatter graph, while the second app will showcase several Dash components such as the dropdown and the radio item. Dash apps are composed of two main parts. One, the layout of the app. This describes what the app looks like. Part two is the callback. This describes the interactivity of the app, and we'll cover this in the next video. When we run the first piece of code, we see that the app page displays a title and an animated scatter plot. In Dash, these are commonly referred to as a header and a graph component. Let's review the code to learn how these components ended up on the main page. Before we get started, I highly recommend you go into my GitHub repository and download the code I'll be going over. This will make it a lot easier for you to follow along. See the GitHub link under the video. So, in the first part of the code, we import our libraries. Here, we're importing Dash. Then, we are importing the Dash Bootstrap component, which will be used for the layout and then Plotly Express, which will be used to plot the graph. Here we instantiate our app and we call or we incorporate the Bootstrap theme into our app. Then we're using the Plotly Express built-in Gapminder data. We we'll print out the first five rows and you can see here the first five rows with multiple columns of the data set. This is what we're going to plot on this scatter graph. And then we call the Plotly Express um, scatter module. And by assigning certain columns and text to these parameters, we are creating this scatter plot. Specifically, this, this animation frame creates this capability to animate the scatter graph. Now, how do we create the layout? How are we putting the title up here and the graph under here? One of the best ways to create a layout is to use the DBC container that is one of the Dash Bootstrap components. This is a DBC container that comes from the Dash Bootstrap components. Now, as you can see this, if I close the app layout section, you see that everything is inside the Dash Bootstrap container. Everything you want to put on a page on your web app has to be inside a DBC container. If we open it, you'll see that we have two rows one row and two rows that we define inside this container. The first row is going to have the title and the second row is going to contain the graph. So let's open the first row and we'll see that in the first row we have a DBC call and this is typically what you want to do in order to define the width of the components that are going to go inside of this. So here we say 12. This is going to be 12 columns wide. So if we open this, we can see that we have our title, life expectancy versus GDP. This is our title, and it's centered right in the middle, and it has a maximum of 12. It takes the space of 12 columns. That is the maximum that you can take. If we look at the second row, we'll see that we do the same thing. We define a DBC column that's also 12 columns wide, if you go open it, you'll see that in it we have our graph, and this is where we put our figure, our Plotly Express figure inside our graph component. And that is why our graph also takes the full space of the page, because 12 columns wide is the full space of the page. You can do 10, or you can do um, 8 or 6, anything under 12. Now let's take a look at the second app. This app is generated by this second file, layout-intro2.py, 
And as you can see here on the app, we have two, what looks to be two rows with a drop down on the left, radio items on the right, slider on the left on the second row, and text input on the right. So let's see how we build this layout. To build this layout, we're going to wrap everything inside a DBC container. And inside the container, we're creating three rows, the first row, second row, and third row. And you can see that the first row is the title. We define the DBC column of eight columns wide, and we put the title inside of it. This title is relatively short, so we don't need 12 columns wide. We just define eight. And we justify it in the center, which is another way to put the title in the center of the page. So let's close this row. We'll open another row, the second one. In this DBC row, we have two dbc.column components. Each one of them is six columns wide, as you can see here. Six plus six is 12, so make sure that you never surpass 12. It can be four and six, it can be four and four. Whatever you do, just make sure it's under 12. So we'll open this one, we'll open this one, and we see that in the first column component, we have a drop down label right here, and then we have the drop down options right here with the first value chosen as 1952. And then we have the second column component, this one right here. And in this one, we have a label, the radio items, and then the actual radio items itself with the Montreal value chosen by default. Now, because these two column components contain elements with six columns wide or six columns each, which is 12 or lower, then they go one next to the other. If this was seven or this was eight, that would be 13 or 14, which means the first column will be on top of the second one and it will not look good. So make sure to keep it under 12. In the third row, we have the same thing. We have a slider la label and then we have the slider itself, and the first six on the left, and then we have text input on the right with some initial text that we create here, a, an empty input box. And because this is six columns wide and this is six columns wide, this one is on the left and this one is on the right. See what happens if we put this as eight. This will equal 14, which is more than 12 columns, which will cause the text input, this, to be under this right here, because it's larger than 12. Let's refresh this and you'll see the result, you see? So always try to keep it at 12 or under. Finally, to end, I highly recommend you go to this resources right here, this website, the Dash Bootstrap Component website, and click on Layout. This will tell you all the different things that you can do with the layout, starting from rows and columns and how to set them up, horizontally, uh, vertically, how to size them, to order them. There's a lot of very useful information here that can help you design your app in any way that you would like. Thanks for watching. I look forward to sharing the next piece of Plotly Insight. If you enjoy what you learned today, please like and subscribe. Until then, I'm Adam Schroeder, and always remember we're better together, so help each other out. Bye for now.